Um, my first uh, task is to apologise for the quality of the images I was going to show you. I don't have to make that apology anymore, so I'll just carry on. Fantastic. Um, the topic of my paper is slide tape, key work in the UK since the 1970s. This paper provides the rationale for my lar largely unfunded research project that I have worked on since 2008. I had identified the form slide tape during my doctoral research, which was published uh, in the completed doctoral thesis and is held by the British Library, and I completed that in 2007. Uh, slide tape was not the main topic of my doctoral research, which looked at aspects of artists' film in the UK in the same period. Since 2008, I have been researching slide tape and collecting material. The images that you might have seen have <laughs> were collected in a piecemeal fashion, which says much about the form. It has been overlooked, is hardly recognised, and largely forgotten. However, there has been action in this research project. I'm not sure that I'd call it action research because I'm not quite sure about the, the um, nuances of that definition. But in 2011, I began collaborating with a curator, Yasmin Bay Clifford, the director of Vivid Projects in Birmingham. In November of last year, this led to a series of exhibitions, an artist residency, talks, and a symposium. These events offered a fresh appraisal of the abandoned medium slide tape and importantly restaged some of the key works of the period. What follows, as I say, is the rationale for this and other planned publications. As a form, slide tape is a series of projected 35mm transparency slides synchronised with a tape soundtrack and used by artists in the late 1970s and early 1980s in the UK. As a medium slide tape synchronised two or more projectors with a pulse command on a tape soundtrack, allowing images to fade between one project projector and another and synchronised with the soundtrack. In the late 1970s, slide tape was relieved of its conventional use as an educational and presentational tool. This became a moment when avant-garde artists in the UK in particular found a different technology with which to explore images and sound. During the 1960s and early 1970s, artists had developed a range of art practice in time-based media performance film and video installation. These now familiar histories of time-based media are increasingly well documented by writers, curators and critics, amongst others Al Reese and Michael O'Prey, who have made a significant contribution to this. These histories attest to the, to the development of media forms that were in clear opposition to the history and traditions of painting and sculpture, where artists developed experimental practices to address the contemporary social and political landscape. It was in this context that the use of slide tape by artists emerged in the UK. Artists who later worked in film, installation and performance used slide tape during this short period before it was abandoned and quickly replaced by newer video technologies. The period during which slide tape work circulated in galleries in the UK is marked by two key exhibitions, About Time, Video Performance and Installation by 21 Women Artists, 1980, an exhibition staged initially at the Institute of Contemporary Arts London, and this was at the high point of its use. In 1990, at the Museum of Modern Art in Oxford, they staged Signs of the Times, uh, which was curated, by the way, by Chrissy Illies, uh, a decade, and subtitle was A Decade of Video, Film and Slide Tape Installation in Britain, 1980 to 1990. And although not entirely retrospective, this was signalling the end of slide tape's useful, useful life as an art form. After this, slide tape, with very few exceptions, no longer existed as a form seen in exhibitions and galleries. It's interesting to note that slide tape was, 
has not always been restricted to gallery contexts. As a media form, it was first used in educational contexts as an audiovisual learning aid. During the 1970s, it, it had been used in secondary schools as part of students learning how to make films and in encouraging expression and creativity. Slide tape presentations were an accessible adjunct to these activities in schools that did not have access to cine cameras, as a teaching handbook of the time shows in 1978. It was a form that was also used in community art and education contexts. An example of this is the West Midlands-based Some Girls Poster Project of 1978, an initiative led by youth workers Carola Adams, Leah Thorne and Lakshmi Jamdagni, who worked with groups of young women to record their experiences. The young women's groups were then joined by arts workers Graham Pete and Johnny Turpey to make a slide tape presentation that toured youth clubs in the UK, using it to raise issue-based discussion and debate. Maggie Hum writes of a similar project that took place in 1989. Women study students from the University of East London worked with local community photographers on a slide tape project to produce work that was described as transformative. Hum, in her description, notes that while slide tape was cheap, crude and eccentric, it was useful in separating sounds and images and their effects, which could then be interrogated and brought together in the making of visual political theory. The use of slide tape by avant-garde artists came with early support from the London Filmmakers Co-op co and later a newer organisation, London Video Arts, in the late 1970s and 1980s. For artists, slide tape was a relatively cheap way to produce work that could then be made without the need for external funding. As Chrissy, <coughs> sorry, Chrissy Illies pointed out in retrospect, it was a self-supporting practice. And slide tape resources were housed in educational institutions and could be accessed by artists and filmmakers to make their work. The London Filmmakers Co-op is rightly seen to occupy a central place in the history of British avant-garde film during the period. When the Co-op held a summer show in 1980, it included slide tape as an area related to film alongside video, expanded cinema and photography, all of which were activities that the Co-op's filmmakers had embraced since the 1960s. Amongst the varying work on show were Judith Higginbottom's Sea Dreams of 1980, Tina Keane's Clapping Songs, also of 1980, and Cordelia Swan and Jim, Jim Diver's Kiev Code, which were all described as either slide tape, tape slide pieces, and installation. Slides or slides and tape or audio was used in a work by Simon Thorne which also include film, included film and live performance. Um, e. E. Vona Mitchell and Lawrence Upton, Upton's PW Square used slides and audio tape and was seen with Super 8 film. These works <coughs> conform to the elastic nature of expanded cinema events that Al Reese describes recently in his book on it, of the same name, Expanded Cinema that included multiple projections, live actions, and film environments in any one event. Expanded cinema had regarded the projector as a sculptural and performative object, as well as one that fulfilled the function of projecting images. The wide range of experimental work taking place at the co-op in this vibrant period in its history was one in which slide tapes forms were included, and while emerging out of this experimental aesthetic, it did not reside there. Whilst the co-op provided a resource where artists could make films without funding, there were internal political problems that had had an impact on the work that its members produced. There was a gendered division in, of labour at the co-op where men dom dominated the workshops, leaving the office task to its women members, and this led to a marginalisation of those feminist filmmakers. The filmmakers Tina Keane, Liz Rhodes and Annabelle Nich Nicholson formed a group and initially took part in and then resigned from 
the film as film exhibition at the Haywood Gallery, London in 1979. This was an objection on the grounds of their token inclusion and their withdrawal left dramatically empty spaces in the exhibition. This event took place in the context of the growing women's movement and increasing activity amongst feminist artists and filmmakers. The following year, a group of women initiated the exhibition Women's Images of Men at the Institute of Contemporary Arts London, and this led to the exhibition About Time, as I've mentioned before. <coughs> About Time made an important contribution to a gender-based critique and engaged this analysis in an area of practice where male artists have been seen to dominate much of its development an area which was seen to have grown out of the in intersection of expanded cinema and performance work at the co-op. About Time included slide tape work by Judith Higginbottom, Pat Whiteread, Tina Keane and Roberta Graham. Judith Higginbottom <coughs> exhibited Water into Wine, a slide tape work using two projectors. The work was made at the same time as Sea Dreams, both works approaching similar subject matter in different ways. Sea Dreams was based on Higginbottom's menstrual dreams and used the sequential possibilities of the slide projector to present four sequences or cycles that approximated to the menstrual calendar, accompanied by a soundtrack of waves breaking on a pebble beach. And here I have to pause for a little smile, slight cliche about the pebble beach. Anyway, I continue. Water into Wine collated the details of 27 women talking about their menstrual cycle, the soundtrack recording their thoughts and feelings, accompanied by slide images of red flowers and the sea. Amongst the other 21 artists in About Time, Roberta Graham exhibited short cuts to sharp looks of 1979, a slide tape work that mounted a critique against cosmetic surgery projected images of sharp metal knives and human flesh, accompanied by what was called a hideously graphic soundtrack. Short Cuts was described as a directly critical work by its reviewer, Sarah Kent. Pat Whiteread's work, uh, Journey of Human Error, was also directly critical and was concerned with ecology, materialism and technology. Whiteread had been a member of the organising group that had initiated uh, the previous Institute of Contemporary Art exhibition, Women's Images of Men. And you might recognise that name, the surname at least, the family name of Whiteread. Um, she's the mother of, uh, or was, the mother of Rachel Whiteread, who was the first woman to win the Turner Prize um, in the UK a little while ago now. Um, anyway, Pat Whiteread's uh, work in About Time at the ICAA was, ex was exhibited as a slide tape work and transferred to video for its exhibitions tour to Bristol, Liverpool, Birmingham and Dublin. Amongst other concerns, this hints at the temp temperamental nature of the slide tape medium and its lack of suitability for extended gallery programming. Tina Keane's Seesaw of 1980, a slide tape work about the mother and daughter relationship and similar in its concerns to the children's playground games in another work, Clapping Songs, which is on the slide here, of 1979, a slide tape work that had been seen at the Riverside Studios London in 1979 and part of an audio arts project in the same year. Clapping Songs documented young girls singing a street song, and this was later developed into the video performance and installation work, Demolition Escape, uh, exhibited in 1983 at the Air Gallery in London. Keane was becoming increasingly well known for her wide ranging use of media and had used slide tape briefly as one of a, uh, as one of a range of forms ut utilized in her early career. During the same period, Black Audio Film Collective were producing slide tape work. Their first project as a collective group used slide tape forms prior to their well-known film work. Ex Expeditions 1, Signs of Empire and Expeditions 2 
images of nationality works made between 1982 and 1984 explore colonialism, empire, hybridity, exile, and sourced historical archival image, imagery with which to establish an archaeology of colonial subjectivity. The original work was shown at a number of venues, including the Institute of Contemporary Arts London, Watershed Arts Centre, Centre Bristol, Chapter Arts Centre in Cardiff. Okwi Enwezor, in his recent article to accompany the restaging of this work in the retrospective exhibition, The Ghosts of Sons, the film art of... Okay. I can see, I can see the time here. Okay. The film Art of the Black Audio Film Collective, 1982 to 1998, at FACT Liverpool in 2007, describes the intertextuality of the work where text, sound and image each sliding across the spade, space of the other. A founding uh, member of another group, uh, the Black Art Group, and a colleague of uh, Black Audio Film Collective, uh, Keith Piper and this is his work which is called Trophies of, of Empire which was a slide tape work made as part of a multimedia exhibition multimedia installation in 1980 exhibited at the Blue Coat Gallery in Liverpool by the time Chris C. Illies came to curate Signs of the Times a decade of video, film and slide tape installation in Britain at the Museum of Modern Art Oxford in 1990 she was able to present the idea that time-based media had clearly developed from these earlier practices in slide tape. It is considered that work in slide tape had by that time become less a set of critical tools than a series of illusionistic devices. In Signs of the Times, um, I'm speeding up now, was uh, a work by Holly Warburton called Veridius of 1990. Uh, a slide tape projection which was concerned with Baroque imagery and given Illy's commentary had a place in music, fashion and new romantic pop culture. This, used, this work used sophisticated dissolved techniques which by that time had become available and were being used in marketing technologies. Illy's acknowledged that slide tape's precedents were in the earlier politicised work that had overturned contemporary art practice and her statements were also clearly signalling the end of those projects. After a decade, these radical interventions in which Illy's included slide tape had resulted in new forms of practice and in new modes of address. Signs of the Times clearly offered a summary show at a point when the technologies that artists were using had changed significantly, as had the social and political landscape in the UK. Very few, if any, artists have used slide tape with any consistency throughout their practice. It can be seen that slide tape was used as an interim form on the way towards another related medium, one that was usually film. An exception to this is James Coleman, who has made work in slide tape since 1973 and has continued to do so as recently as 1999. An Irish artist well known in both America and Europe he stands apart from any of these groupings or individuals previously mentioned. Coleman has worked in a range of mediums, film, video, installation and performance, but it is, work, it is his work in slide tape that sets him apart. Simply put, Coleman's slide tape works are of a different order, so much so that Rosalind Krauss suggests that his continued work with the medium of slide tape con uh, constitutes an example of inventing it. Coleman has consistently made slide tape work with high production values, from the conceptual and documentary uh, slide piece of 1973 uh, to the piece Sharon here of 1980 to the highly staged and constructed work initials of 1993 to 94. The very fact that uh, Coleman titles the, me the medium of his work as projected slide images with synchronised audio narration is accurate, but at some remove from the more domestic audio narration, sorry, more domestic scale of some slide tape work. Krauss, while not dis disavowing work made by other artists, suggests that slide tape work 
has no aesthetic lineage to call upon, and to, do, to, to adopt it as a medium in the way that Coleman has can only be a singular undertaking. Whilst this may be the case, slide tape has produced a distinctive aesthetic presence, one where images and sound could explore new narrative forms and involve the materiality and the physical presence of the projection apparatus itself. The medium is part of the performance of the work, producing a distinctive and evocative presence, one where there is no escape from the sound of the carousel of slides reversing and reloading to repeat its sequence. Given that, there is clearly both a distinctive aesthetic and formal quality, one which defines the form and indeed led to its demise. <laughs>